We've all felt the pressure of picking the right gift for someone in particular. The process is excruciating, but the payoff is thrilling. The Christmas story tells of wise men traveling a great distance to give three gifts to Jesus. What would compel them to go to all that trouble? And why those gifts? What does it all mean? It could not have been an easy trip. Joseph, Joseph needed to get to Bethlehem for legal reasons, and he brought Mary with him on the verge of delivery. In spite of the Christmas cards that you've seen, there's a good chance that they both walked. The Bible says nothing about a donkey. The trip was at least 70 miles. Why not leave Mary home? After all, surely she would have been more comfortable with her female relatives to take care of her and maybe a proper midwife on call. We don't know. Perhaps, perhaps they remembered the prophecy that Bethlehem would be Jesus' birthplace. Perhaps, maybe, just maybe, Joseph didn't want to leave his wife alone in the hands of gossip. Don't know for sure. And then the birth itself, not in an inn, as there was no room for them there. Labor and delivery for a first-time mother. Could Joseph find anyone to help? Who knows? An adorable baby was about to come. His birth in a manger to keep to keep him off the floor so that no one would step on him or keep the creepy crawlers away. The birth of the Son of God. This wasn't what Mary and Joseph wanted. It wasn't in their plans, but it was what God chose. It was in his plans. This is how much God loves this church, that he sent his only son into the world under such stress and circumstances. This is how much Jesus, our Savior, loves us. Our troubles, our suffering, our poverty, our griefs, he shared them all from the very beginning. Every single day of his life. He came on purpose, deliberate, deliberate, intentional, to be the man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. That's what the prophet foretold in Isaiah 53, 3. And he took that to the cross. And then he rose from the dead, triumphant over all of this, over evil, over sin, over death, over the power of the enemy. He did it for you and me because, well, he just simply loves us. And as he shared our suffering so that now we can share his joy and everlasting life. Jesus came to be Emmanuel, God with us forever. Jesus came to be the light of the world and for us. Matthew 5 14 to 16 says, you 
He's talking to us. You are the light of the world, like a city on the hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. No, instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. If we can dim, take these lights off, headlights off, please. Appreciate it, house lights. Verse 16, in the same way, let your good deeds, light, shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Tonight, church, as we get ready to on just a few light these candles, this special element of our service tonight it's really a reminder for all of us here that we have been called to be a light. A light that shines brightly. A light that goes out into the world and shares it. Each one of us here has been given the responsibility to share that light. Jesus says that we are that light. And as you see and hold this candle in front of you tonight, let that be a reminder. Let that be a reminder to you that you're not just here to warm up a seat. You're not just here to say good things about what experiences you had in church. But you have been called to go out and be a light in your home, in your community, in your workplace, amongst your friends, amongst your family, to people you don't even know. Let this light that's, that you're holding tonight shine brightly for all to see. Amen.